feel like maybe I'm out of focus. Miyamoto is in an interview and he expresses to the interviewer that Nintendo does not ever intend to make 100% realistic graphics. This is a quote from Shigeru Miyamoto. If the technology does end up progressing to that level, being the level of being hyper-realistic, then developers won't be able to make something unless it's perfect, will they? And that's one reason why we use a representational style like the deformed polygons, for, inst for instance. If you say you're creating something real, then suddenly everything becomes a technical contest, and the winner is the one who can create the most realistic depiction, right? Except that I don't think that's true, because here is where one's individuality, individuality as a creator, one's style, really comes out. This has always been something that really stuck with me, because I agreed with him at the time, but the more that I think about it, the more that I realize the race towards a hyper-realistic video game, a hyper-realistic real-time render engine is sort of silly, especially in the realm of video games. When we talk about video games, we're not just talking about the visuals, right? We're talking about the mechanics. We're talking about how the character jumps, how the character talks, how the character acts, how the player interacts with other characters, how the player interacts with the character on screen, the main character. Oh my god, you're watching the game. Look at the score. Oh, oh, oh wait, that's a video game. Then they'd be so surprised. Uh, that's laughable now <laughs> as, a, as a concept. But, but my point being, the selling point was that the graphics were so spectacular that the game was better because of it. And I don't think that's almost ever... I can't think of a single situation where pretty graphics makes the game functionally better. It makes it look better, but a crappy game with nice graphics is still a crappy game. An ugly game with great mechanics is a great game. It's enjoyable. People, a lot of people want to play it. Minecraft is a perfect example. If you had told me 10 years ago that, how old is Minecraft? I have no idea. Uh, say 20 years ago. If you had told me 20 years ago that somebody's going to be playing this playing Minecraft unironically and saying it's a good game unironically, I would have said you were crazy. These games are not realistic. They don't replicate real life graphically. What they do is they put functionality first. Functionality ultimately will trump the prettiness of a game. Okay, let's imagine that. Let's imagine that we have a game that is completely realistic. And let's say that functionally it's a really good game. There are still going to be things that haven't been covered, that haven't been addressed, that didn't have resources paid to them, that make the game still unrealistic. Like, there are so many aspects to a video game that need to be covered in order to make it quote-unquote realistic. Graphics are not even a quarter of it. But what about the animations? Are the animations realistic? The mechanics? Are the mechanics realistic? For example, how often do you jump in real life? How often? But in almost every single video game I've ever played, you have a jump function. Is that realistic? Is it not? I don't know, but we have to think about that sort of thing. Narrative. To a certain extent, video game narratives live inside this bubble that just don't really address the outside world. Details are, like the detailing, like if I look around the room that I'm in right now, you know, the wall has a bunch of dings and stuff that are unique in different parts of the wall. The, the door here, let's see if I can swing this open. Maybe look at that door. All right, you have these two lines here. There's no repeating across here. You have 
this pattern is slightly different than this pattern, even though it's the same part of the grain. But that door that I just showed you is different from the door that's right next to it, which is different from the door right across the way. Now they're all made with the same kind of wood, but they all look different. The time and energy that would need to go into place to make textures unique on each of these three doors and the 1500 other doors that would go into a video game would be astronomical, ridiculous, and not necessary because when I'm playing a game, it is not my intention to walk to each of the doors or each of the walls or any of that and say, this is, this is right, this is wrong, this is wrong. But to make something hyper-realistic, that's what you'd have to do. Jake, you're being ridiculous. No one would ever go through that much time and energy to make an environment realistic. Now maybe you're right, but what happens when we get the graphics on point and suddenly the mechanics feel weird? Let's say it takes you three years to make hyper-realistic graphics, right? Now you got the mechanics to worry about. You have to tweak those for another year. Now you got the narrative to worry about. You gotta rewrite the whole thing. So that takes another two years. My point being, ultimately, is not that hyperrealism is bad. The idea of hyperrealism as an experiment, as a concept, makes total sense. I think it's reasonable for us to think about what hyperrealism looks like in a video game. What I don't think makes a whole lot of sense is to actually invest resources into putting all of that effort into a game. The effort required to play with the concept of hyperrealism, minimal. And you'll get rewards from that. You'll learn things about texturing and, and how you do animations and how you do your mechanics. But the time and effort that it would take for you to invest that level of research into every aspect of a video game, stupid. Don't do it. Just don't do it. We already have Rockstar boasting about how they have 100 hour crunch weeks. Like, let's not just, let's just not add to it. The amount of time and energy that game studios spend on video games is plenty. We do not need to add more to it. Do I have anything else to say? Poo poo pee pee caca da ba song ba. Don't subscribe to this channel. I don't know why you're doing it. Why are you subscribing to this channel? I haven't contributed to this channel in months. Why? Because I made a video about Dwarf Fortress. It's not even that good. What's going on, man? Wait, all of my other videos have like 200 hits. Why? Just don't, don't, don't subscribe. Don't even watch this. Why did you watch this?